In our last video, we were introduced to the idea of sigma notation. And we use that notation to take a sum that had been expressed in sigma notation and then to write it out like this one is and then find a number. This set of problems wants us to work in the other direction. It gives me a finite sum written out and wants me to express it in sigma notation. So we have to figure out the starting place of the index, the stopping place of the index, and a kth term formula. So in this example, I see 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8. And I'm thinking that those are all even numbers. And so maybe if I just think about what an even number is, I'll have some idea of what to do for my kth term formula. And what I remember is that an even number is always a multiple of 2. And another way of thinking about that is it's always some number times 2. And all of a sudden, this formula is starting to look pretty good already for the kth term formula, because if I plug in a 1 for k, I get out 2. If I plug in a 2 for k, I get 4, so on and so forth. And I think that actually does it. That That's my kth term formula, and I need to start at 1 and end at 4. And there I have it. There is this sum expressed in sigma notation. But maybe someone, maybe one of you thought, well, what if I wanted to start my sum at 0? Well, then I have a 0 term, a first term, a second term, and I need to stop when k is equal to 3. I was actually thinking maybe you should pause the video and see if you can fill in a formula here that would still work and give me a different way of expressing this same sum in sigma notation. Pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, well there are a number of different ways to write it down, but if I just think about what I had before, well, I had two times something and I need that something to be one. Well, if I plugged in a zero, it'd be zero. And so if I just think about it, k went down by 1, so if I add 1 to it, I get back where I started. And so that would be one way of writing that sum down in that set of parentheses, not really necessary. And I guess that means I could have also written down this if I had distributed the uh, 2 through that set of parentheses. And so what I've done now is I've re-indexed this sum. I have two different ways of writing down this sum in sigma notation. And one of the big things to learn from this is if someone just writes out a list of numbers and says write this in sigma notation, there's actually very many different ways of writing it down. In fact, you could start the index anywhere you wanted. There's a way to write this sum down if you start the index at 1, at 5, at minus 3 billion. Let's see if we can write this sum down in sigma notation two different ways. So 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11. Well, I'm thinking that these numbers are odd. That I'm summing together the first so many odd numbers, and I need to think about what an odd number is. Well, an odd number is always something that is one off of an even number. So one way to think about odd numbers is that it's some even number plus 1. And if I take that formula... and I start k at 0, I'll certainly get the first term written down correctly, right? Because I'd get a, a 1, 2 times 0 plus 1. Here I'd have 2 times 1 plus 1, and this seems to work, and I'd have a 0th term, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and I'd need to stop at k equals 5. All right, well, pause the video, and let's see if you can write down what the sum should be if I started at 1, and end it at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. See if you can find the appropriate kth term formula. Okay, well if an odd number is just something that's one away from an even, another way of writing it down would be to say it's 2k minus 1. And let's see if this works. I plug in a 1, I get 2 times 1 is 2 minus 1 is 1. Plug in a 2. 2 times 2 is 4 minus 1 is 3. And here are two different ways of writing down the same sum.